Hi, I'm Sarah Hill. I'm the CEO of Bookster. We are here today with author Jen Glantz. She is the author of Always a Bridesmaid for Hire. Jen, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Um, so before we get started, I just want to let the audience know that if you have questions for Jen, please uh, put your comments on the um, underneath the post and we are fielding those live. So if you have a question for her, we can get those to her almost immediately um, and we will give you a nice fun shout out as well. All right, Jen, this has been one of the more interesting things I've come across in a while. Um, can you fill us in just a little bit on uh, what this book is about sure. and what inspired you to write the book? So the book is a memoir about my life as a professional bridesmaid where strangers from all around the country have hired me to be their actual bridesmaid for their wedding. I've been doing this job for three years and after getting the question, what's it like being a hired bridesmaid for strangers? I decided to write down a lot of those stories. But also inside the book is my experience starting a business from scratch, a business that people laughed at at first, but really changed and disrupted the wedding industry. And there are a ton of stories in there about my own personal love life and what a disaster it is, <laughs> as well as just stories about growing up and making mistakes and becoming the person that I am. How beautiful is that? Thank you. Okay, so you started a business. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. I think that that's so admirable. Thank you. Um, you started it and you were like, hey, I just keep seeing, you felt a need for this. Yes. And then you posted on Craigslist? I did. Okay. So I was a bridesmaid for my friends so many times, like a lot of other 20-somethings. And after a while, I realized that I was enjoying being a bridesmaid for them. I was their go-to person for everything and I wondered after I was asked to be a bridesmaid twice in one day by two friends oh I wondered God. could I do this job for strangers so it was a Friday night I was kind of angry that I had to be a bridesmaid twice for two people and I posted an ad on Craigslist offering my services to strangers I said let me handle your dirty work I will take you to the bathroom so you can pee in your wedding dress because I know that's hard to do I'll plan your bachelorette party I'll deal with your family drama I posted the ad I didn't tell anyone it was anonymous I shut my computer and two days later I got hundreds of emails from brides all over the world who wanted to hire me. No way. And they would just fly you out and you would do the thing for them? Yeah. So I have many different packages and one yeah. of them is walking down the aisle as the bridesmaid for these strangers. I have a fake name, a fake backstory of how I know them. Their fiance doesn't even know about it. Their no. friends don't know I'm hired. And oh I've done this God. about 60 something times. and. You know what? Everyone would ask me, who the heck would hire you? They must be losers. And I would say, you don't understand people. People have needs. They have problems. They have situations. And every time I've been hired to do this for a stranger, there was a story attached to it. Yeah. A story that I learned something from and that made me fall in love with different types of humans. So a lot of the stories I put in the book are about why people did hire me. And those stories are shocking but also make you realize that not everybody has the kind of relationships that you do in your life. Absolutely. That's great. Um, and again, you guys send in questions. We're fielding them live. Uh, we have Sandra over here who is uh, diligently uh, sorting through them and getting them to us. Um, so what do you do, I guess, like how, like weddings are just a, kind of a nightmare. A like, big hey, nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's a lot. That yeah, you you're like a trooper. Mm -hmm. You know, like you go in and you're like, like a secret service. You know, you yeah. go in and you're like, okay, I've got this handled. What is one of the more uh, odd or like, I guess a few things. Like, what is one of your favorite times sure. that you've been involved? And then, what is one of the more like? Has there ever been something that just struck you as just kind of, oh, I didn't expect this or see this coming? Oh, yeah. So I like to preface all of this by saying this book is not a wedding book. The first page of the book says, I hate weddings. I don't understand weddings. I started this job because I love people and I love helping people in difficult situations, yeah. which like you said, a wedding is just that. Oh so, um, you know, for example, one very crazy situation I had was a couple months ago, I worked a wedding for a bride and five minutes before her wedding, she pulls me into a room frantically and says, I hate the groom. Oh. I don't want to do this anymore. 
And she had all her friend, friends there and family members there, but she told me because sometimes yeah. having that stranger in the room totally. lets you talk about anything you want. So I had to fix that situation. And that was one of the moments where I realized that it's quite common to have cold feet, to feel like that. It's a matter of being open and honest with the person saying, hey, do what you want to do. Don't give in to any pressures around you. Yeah. Only a stranger can tell you that. So did she go through with it or did you have to <laughs> alert all the guests? Very long story short is that I decided, listen, before you call this off, I'm yeah. going to lock you in the groom in a room for 10 minutes. I need you to talk it out with him. When you come back, if you don't want to get married, I'll call us a ride. We'll get we'll get pizza. <laughs> we'll take pictures. We'll yeah. have a great night. Yeah. So they talked it out and they decided to go through with it as a fake wedding just because they had 300 guests there half of them flew in from Africa to be there no. and they went through with it but it was one of those weddings where everything went wrong around them it rained it was an outdoor wedding and it rained oh. everyone was soaked the cake was a three level cake and when they were moving it the table broke so the cake fell up in the air and crashed down on the floor oh. I was able to save the very top layer with my bare hands but oh. it was one of those weddings where it was just a nightmare oh no Okay, that is so depressing. Yeah. Um, but very interesting, and I'm glad that you were there. Yeah. Because, like, what, you know, everybody needs that person. They that do. They can sound, be their sounding board. Oh, for sure. Yeah, there's, uh, the weddings that I've been involved with, there's always, like, the bride always has that last-minute moment of panic mm -hmm. where they're like, oh, my God, what am I doing? I'm not going to have sex with anyone yeah. else again, <laughs> but, like, whatever it else it is. Yeah. And like, Oh no, this isn't good. I think I've been doing this job so long that I've started to see, okay, this emotion projects the person really doesn't want to get married, and this emotion projects that they're just nervous, and they yeah. do want to do this, but it's terrifying. You're about to walk down an aisle where 200 people are looking at you. Who enjoys that? Yeah. That, Very few people. No, no one, no one would. <laughs> okay, um, we have a question from Mahogany. Hey, Mahogany. Hello. It says, what is the craziest story from one of your weddings? So that, that one was pretty crazy. Do you yes. have another, like, uh, kind of, you know, one that was a little bit more on the brighter side? <laughs> sure. I mean, this is another odd story, and it's in the book. It's the last chapter of the book. Uh, it's probably the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me is I had a bride who we spoke on the phone a couple times a month for a good year, got to know each other, had a backstory of how we knew each other, and I always felt like something was off. To be honest with you, I thought she was going to catfish me. Like, I thought she wasn't even really getting married. She didn't have a Facebook. She didn't want to ever oh Skype. Gosh. Those are things you realize, okay, the person's probably not the person. Yeah. So the night before the wedding, I'm about to get on a plane to go to her rehearsal dinner. She calls me and says, Jen, I have to tell you something. My heart's racing. I'm sweating. I'm like, this is the end of my business and maybe my life. Who knows? <sighs> and she goes, the person I'm marrying is gay. And I'm marrying him for other reasons. And I didn't really know what to say. I didn't know what to do. And I asked her, and I write about this in the book, she called me a journalist because I asked the hard-hitting questions of why, Absolutely. you know, why are you doing this and all of this. And um, I'm not going to reveal how it ended because you could read the last chapter of the book, but it's a beautiful story. Um, people who read that chapter end up crying by the end because that was a moment where I personally realized a lot about love and how love between people is very different and can never be judged and sometimes not explained. And um, it was a very interesting moment in my life because a lot of the book is about my failed attempts at love and crazy things I've done to find love. And by, by the final chapter, I started to realize that, you know, love is something that's very strange. Yeah. And in this job, you see all different forms of it. And I think that that's probably the greatest part about this job. What do you think is one of the for the marriages that you do look up to and that you are exposed to, what do you think is like one of those, is there a type of love that is better than another type of love or what do you think? Is there one that's like dressed for success sure. as opposed to one that isn't? I guess before I started this job and I was dating and figuring out my personal life, I thought I wanted this checklist. The guy must be honest. He must be, you know, interested in how weird I am. He must be passionate. He must be all these things. And I thought that that's how you find love and hold on to it. And, you know, every wedding I went to, I was like, I want that kind of love. No, I want that kind of love. And it came to the point where I was like, I don't want any of this. Yeah. I want to meet someone where I have that connection. And whatever I feel like that connection is strong enough, I'm going to go with. So it made me break the whole stereotype of what love should be. 
I don't think you can ever judge a person's love. People ask me all the time, out of everyone you get, you know, you marry, do you think that their relationship's going to last? You have no, no idea. idea. You might see a couple madly in love, but 30 years from now it falls apart. Everything in life is temporary. Love is also. It's about finding someone who you can be with and deal with and whatever else you want in that equation. Sure. And somebody who you want to go through life with, if you're going to spend sure. so much time with them, it's like you might as well be able to spend, you know, a few of those harder years together. Or harder of course. Times together. You want someone who you can put up with and who puts up with you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is hard to do. I'm yeah. a hard one to put up with. <laughs> um, okay, we have a question from Nala. She says, do people ask you all the time how you feel about the movie Bride Wars? Yeah, people compare me all the time to 27 Dresses, and I roll my eyes because her story ends so predictable, and mine doesn't have an ending, but it won't be like that. And Of course, Bride Wars and The Wedding Ringer and Bridesmaids, those are movies, and while they have their own drama, this is the kind of job where the drama is stranger than fiction in a sense, because you never know what you're stepping into and dealing with, and I think it's this job is more entertaining than any of those movies. Oh, yeah. I cannot even imagine. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, we have another one. Would you ever hire a bridesmaid to yourself, a bridesmaid yourself? So um, if I ever do get married, I don't want a wedding at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. I don't like weddings. I think they are a waste of time, uh, a waste of money. And I think the wedding industry tells you what you need to have that you don't really need to have. And that's why people hire me often is to bring them back down to earth and say, don't you dare spend 10000 on flowers that are going to die in eight hours. Yeah. Um, so I don't want any of this kinds of stuff. But interestingly enough, for this business, I've had 16,000 people apply to work for me wow. to do this job. And one of the greatest parts about having this business is being able to empower people who saw me take a bizarre idea and run with it. So I've hired people to work for me that work weddings with me, and I have a training program where I train people to do this exact job, which is to say that I want people to read this book and be empowered by a crazy idea and run with your own crazy idea. Sure. When I started this business, people called me left and right and said, Jen, you're crazy. You've lost your mind. What are you doing? And I said, I'm loving what I'm doing, and yeah. I believe in it, and I'm going to prove to the world and myself that there is a need for this. And I'm going to explain to the world what that is. And I think when people read the crazy things I went through to get this business going and the people I met along the way, that hopefully they'll be empowered to create their own side hustle, which I think is one of the greatest things anyone can do is start something for themselves and let people call you crazy. Yeah. Because when they do call you crazy, it means that you're doing something right. That's a good point. Well, I will take that to heart. <laughs> I will definitely take that to heart. Yes. Um, is it hard to tell uh, you got? Is it hard to tell guys that you're dating what you do for a living? Oh yes. I mean, I'm a vegetarian, and that was hard to tell guys because a lot of guys were like, "You don't eat meat? Check, please." So letting them know that I'm a bridesmaid for hire, they're like, "So you're eager to get married? Oh, you're a wedding crasher? People pay you for this?" And I got really defensive about my job. And uh, I even had guys take me out on dates for entrepreneur advice. They were like, oh, can you look at my business plan? No joke, mid drink one. They're like, could you tell me if I'm on the right track? Oh, man. Um, so I've, I've heard it all. I've seen it all. Um, so I think finding the right person who appreciated what I was doing and supported my ideas was very difficult. But, you know, I'm happy that I did eventually. And, um, I was scared I never would, maybe, because of this job. So are you still dating in the city? So I have a boyfriend for a very long time now, okay. um, which I found because I did a weird dating experiment. And in the book, I write about a lot of the dating experiments I've done. My mom hacked my JDate account for me. So she went on and she set up dates for me, messaging guys and no. choosing them for me. And I write about that in the book. Oh my the God. shortest Don't, date my I've, mom will my mom will be all over that. Okay, really. well the shortest date I've been on in my life was 15 minutes and it was one that my mom set up. Um, I also went to a matchmaker who matched me up with somebody and that was also a nightmare and I write about that in the book. Um, then I gave up on dating and was like, I'm going to get my eggs frozen. Yeah. And the guy, the doctor was like, don't freeze your eggs, go on Tinder. And oh, I write no. about that. But so to find <laughs> oh the current boyfriend, God. I went on 14 first dates in February of last year and I met nobody I liked. Went on date 15, 
and met somebody that I like. So okay. for me, life and dating has always been an experiment of doing very weird things to find something. The result that you want. Or something, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Zach says, when did you realize you could make a career out of being a bridesmaid? I had no idea. It was an accident. I was asked to be a bridesmaid twice in one night and was upset because I felt like I was really taking on the always a bridesmaid title mm -hmm. and I didn't like that. So I was just angry and upset and I went on Craigslist and I said, you know what, I'm, I was a poetry major in college, I have no business experience, but I thought to myself, why not put it out there to the world? Test out the idea, say, hey, anyone want this? So I put it out there to the world, turns out people wanted it, then that's when I made a website and the business model and packages and figured out the details most people figure out before they test an idea. So I think if I would have sat on the idea or asked people what they thought, I wouldn't be talking about this right now because sure. they would have said, don't you dare put yourself on Craigslist. My mom was like pissed at me when I told her I put myself on Craigslist. She told me never to go on there for anything. Um, but I'm glad I did because I, I believed it could change people's lives and I just ran with it. Okay. Uh, what, do you, what advice do you have out there for people who are starting their own business? If you're starting your own business, my advice is to start right now. A lot of us talk ourselves down about starting it. Oh, we'll do it next month when we have time or in a year from now I'll have the money and my idea's not there yet so let me think about it more. No. Put something out there right now or else you're never going to do it and never give up. There's going to be everyone in the world telling you to stop, telling you you're not good enough, smart enough, great enough to do this. Ignore everyone. I've never listened to anyone in my life. It makes me the most stubborn person, but good things happen from it occasionally. Yeah, that's great. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, we are at the 20 minute mark, so get your questions in and we will make sure um, to answer them for you. Um, another question that I have is, what advice do you have for those who are looking for love? Stop looking. Uh, stop looking from your couch. Stop looking when you're at an event. If you make everything about finding love, you start to view the world in a very narrow perspective. Make it about meeting new people. You know, I think the more strangers you connect with, you talk to, you learn more about yourself, you learn more about love. Uh, I think when we sit there and say, I want to get married by September, you're setting yourself up for a mental disaster. So stop looking yeah, and instead- and a possible divorce. And a divorce. <laughs> try new things, try weird things. I hated dating, so I forced myself on 14 first painful date just so I could get over the fact that I hated dating. And I think doing things like that will lead you to a love you never knew you could find. Okay. Um, and then what else? Oh, we have uh, Tamara asks, is this a lifelong job for you? It's a great question. I once worked a wedding where there was another real bridesmaid, a friend of the bride who was 60 and she was a bridesmaid. So I think there's no age limit on this job. I've told myself that I will work it until one day I wake up and say, I can't do it anymore. I don't see that happening anytime soon. I still get energy from everyone I work with. Um, but yeah, I hope so. I hope that this is a job that continues to change women's lives and I hope to be able to hire more people to do it so that brides everywhere can have a support system. That's great. Um, and then we have another question coming in, so I'll wait for that. But do you think that um, when you started this, did you believe in marriage beforehand and then afterwards you're not so sure or what yeah. has that evolution been like? I write about this in the prologue that I was the girl that never dreamed of her wedding. Like when fourth grade when people were like, oh I want this and not this, I was like, I just want to meet someone who I like. I never yeah. planned my wedding, I never imagined what it would be like, I never thought I would get to that finish line. And now that I work in the industry, it's made me confirm the fact that I don't want any of that and if I do get married I want it to be a celebration not you know a, a formula or a checklist I want yeah. it to be cheap pizza live music and I want to wear something sparkly you know those are my <laughs> three things that I want um, and I think that you know I've just was never that girl who liked weddings it's funny that I'm working in the wedding industry because I never thought I would be doing that okay all right we have um, when did you decide to write your book that's a great question. So I've been a writer, I'd say, my whole life, and I wrote one book in 2014 called All My Friends Are Engaged. 
So when I was beginning to start this business and work these weddings, I said to myself, I have to get this message out to the world. I'm learning so much through the people I'm working with. And I have a blog I've been running for six years called The Things I Learned From. So I'm used to writing about what I learned from weird situations. So it was almost automatic in my mind that I would write this book. And it was not easy to get published. I was rejected you know, dozens of times. But in my head, it was something I was always going to eventually do. So after the dozen rejections, did you just keep sending more or what, what did you do? I did. I kept sending more. My agent kept pitching it. I kept believing in it. One day I got the phone call that it was you know, going to be published and I couldn't believe it. I collapsed outside of 37th and 7th and I cried Aww. and I called my mom and she's like, I don't understand why you're so upset. I told you that it only <laughs> takes one person to say yes and that it would happen and it did only take one. And I remember the week before that happened, I had given up. I was like, I am not pitching, pitching publishers anymore. I, and I wrote this in my newsletter to my subscribers. I said, I'm going to take crayons and write this book on paper and copy the paper and hand it out in Times Square. This book will be written. And I just never gave up on it. Uh, and I think for people out there who want to write books, know that it's not going to be easy. No one gets a book deal their first try. You know, sometimes you, I, I wrote the proposal for this book about, I think I had 12 different drafts and it's painful. I had a book that I tried to get published before this that never got published. Uh, so, and that was my biggest regret was giving up on that. I'm never going to do that again. Great advice. We have a, a ton of aspiring writers out there. So I know that they'll love that. Don't give up and write for yourself. Don't write for a publishing contract. There you go. Uh, we have, have you started writing another book? And if so, what is it going to be about? That's a great question. Uh, in my head, I've started writing another book and uh, it's going to be about the fact that I am turning 30 April 1st of next year and I look back at my 20s and say, wow, Jen, you made a mess of your life <laughs> and of other people's lives and I want to write about that. Um, so I don't know if it'll be in bookstores, but it'll be a book that I publish, if anything, about the mistakes I made in my 20s, whether it was staying with a job too long for a boss that was awful, staying with a guy too long who was awful, or just being a person who I didn't like too long. So. Hope to write that before my 30th birthday. You can do it. Thank you. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, Jen, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, where can they find your book? You can find my book, Always a Bridesmaid for Hire, on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, hopefully where all books are sold all over the world. And then how can they keep up with you? Awesome. You can find me at, at Jen Glantz all over social media or visit JenGlantz.com. Okay, and that's G-L-A-N-T-Z. Yay. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in, and and thank you again, Jen. Thank you so much for having out. me. Thank you. Yay.